the fish finger sandwich and the chip butty, both absolute pillars of great British cuisine. What if you can only choose just one? Well, luckily we don't have to, because I'm going to show you my ultimate fish and chip butty. <laughs> Now, I'm an absolute fiend. When I get back from the chip shop with the fish and chips, I'm gonna grab a couple of slices of white bread straight away, a couple of chunks of butter, stick a load of chips in, bit of ketchup, and I'm gonna bosh two of those before I've even sat down to eat my dinner. Now, I also love a fish finger sandwich, so what do we do when we've got that conundrum, which one's best? We make both, so I'm gonna show you how. Now, every fish and chip dinner starts off with some good tartar sauce. I'm gonna make tartar sauce with a twist. I'm gonna put some jalapenos in there. So this is my jalapeno tartar sauce. So we're gonna start with some mayonnaise and we want about 200 mils of mayonnaise to that we of course go in some pickles now I've got about two tablespoons of diced pickles here so in they go jalapenos I've got about a tablespoon about three or four jalapenos so in they go these are pickled jalapenos and of course no tartar sauce is complete without the capers so we've got about two tablespoons of capers there that we've drained and chopped I'm also going to go in with a touch of parsley, some pepper, a good pinch of pepper. We want some salt in there, of course. So again, we're going to go in with some salt. I've got some flaky sea salt here, probably about half a teaspoon of that. And of course, we want a squeeze of lemon. So I've got lemon here, just going to slice this in half, get my fancy lemon squeezer and bosh. Just a little squeeze of lemon to bring all that together. Now we're going to grab a spoon and we're just going to take this and just mix that up. And that really is all there is to it. Nice and easy. That's our tartar sauce, homemade. Absolute winner. So we're going to set that to one side and we're going to crack on with the rest of the dish. So that's the tartar sauce made. Now let's talk chips. Now these chunky chips here, the potatoes that have been peeled and cut into a nice uniform shape and then I've parboiled these for eight minutes and then we drained them, dried them and set them just on a drying rack so these are nice and dry. Now we're going to cook these three times, so we've done once, second time it's going to be in some hot oil. Now I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but don't try this at home, hot oil over a fire probably isn't recommended so if you've got a deep fat fire indoors, just do it indoors, but if you are going to do it outdoors, I've got my pan less than half filled with oil and I'm just going to keep an eye on it. Don't overflow the pan because if that oil overflows into that fire, it's disaster. So stage two for cooking these triple cooked chips. We want them to almost cook through but not take on too much colour for the second stage. So we're going to put them in some oil that's about 130, 135 degrees Celsius. Now the best way to check the temperature of your oil I've found is to use a thermo pen. You might see me use this for barbecuing, for meats to check the internal temperature but it's also great for checking the temperature of your oil. So we're going to go ahead in there and just see where we're at and we're hitting 130 Celsius so we're ready to put these chips in for stage two of the triple cook. Now remember, safety first, so we're just gonna take some of these chips, put them into a sieve, and we're just gonna lower them gently into that oil. We don't want any splashes, we don't want oil to overflow. So just gently into the oil. So they're gonna take, we're gonna leave them in there for maybe five or six minutes, then we'll get them out, drain them, and then we'll start building the rest of the dish. So while those chips are going through their second stage of cooking, we're gonna make our batter for the fish. So I've got 250 grams of flour here. We're gonna go in with about a teaspoon of baking soda. So let's grab a teaspoon and just pop that into the flour. This is gonna help keep it nice and light. So the bacon powder, and of course we wanna go in with a bit of salt. So we're gonna go in with nearly a teaspoon of salt. Just give that a quick mix. Now, the secret to a nice beer batter, get your beer nice and cold. This is at around two or three degrees. It's been in the freezer for a bit, nice and cold. This again is gonna make sure this has got plenty of bubbles in it, nice and airy, and it's gonna just be the best batter you've probably ever had. 
I'll say that, you know, it's my batter, I'm gonna say that, and I, but anyway, <coughs> so we're gonna start to mix that into our flour. So just start pouring it in and just start getting that over your leg, because why not? Um, but most importantly, into the flour. So we've got about 200 mils, maybe 250 mils in there, and we're just gonna mix it, mix it, mix it, and then once it starts to get a little bit thick, we're just gonna go in with some more beer. And we're just gonna keep mixing this now, so it's nice, light, airy, and most importantly, the right consistency to dip our fish in. That's the sort of consistency we're after. So we're just gonna keep mixing that, make sure there's no lumps in there, make sure it's nice, light and airy, and then we're just gonna set that to one side while we get our chips out and we start the mushy peas. Now, for the fish, we want to cook at about 180 Celsius, so we may need to increase the temperature, which means we're going to stick a little bit of, small bit of wood, kindling, whatever you've got, just to get a bit of flame going, just to increase the temperature of that oil. But again, we're going to take the thermopen, pen, just pop it in there and just check the temperature. And if we need to increase the heat, we'll increase the heat. We're sat at about 115 at the minute. So the oil is cooled down slightly while it's cooking the chips, that's fine. So we're going to, like I said, get a bit more heat under here, heat that up, and then we're going to crack on with the mushy peas. So the mushy peas, I'm going to keep really simple. I like nice, quick, simple food. So we're just going to get a pan. We've got a tin of marrow fat peas, you can of course buy dried, but I've gone for the easy route and I bought a tin of them. If you buy dried, you can soak them, you can boil them, you can get them to the consistency that you're after. But, quick and easy, tin of mushy peas. So in they go. We want some butter. We've got about 50 grams of butter. So we're gonna pop that in there and just heat that through those peas. We want a pinch of pepper, pinch of salt. And that's it, we're just gonna melt that butter down into those peas. Once that's all melted and heated, give them a bit of a squash, and that's our mushy peas. So while the peas are doing their thing, we're gonna go back to our oil. Now I said I wanna cook the fish at about 180 to 190 Celsius. So again, gonna go in with the thermo pen and just check the temperature of that oil. Perfect, I can see we're, we're just over 180 Celsius, so we are good to go for the fish. We've got this, these beautiful cod loins here. So these have been dried, and then we're just gonna dust them in some flour. That's going to help the batter to a deer. And then we're literally just going to dip them into our beer batter, pull them out, shake it off, and into the pan it goes. And again, let's get a second one in there. It's my sandwich. I want it to be a big sandwich. It's going to be a big doorstep sandwich. So again, in with that flour, dredge it with the flour into the batter, shake it off. Be very careful when you put this one in because we don't want the pan to be overloaded. We're just going to lower that in very slowly, like so. Just go and clean my hands, I'll be back. First things first, we're going to butter the bread because, of course, it's a chip butty of sorts. So, butter on the bottom layer of our nice thick bread. Next, we're going to go with a layer of our homemade jalapeno tartar sauce on the bottom there. So just slap that on. Don't be shy. Now, of course, tartar sauce, baked fish. So on we go with our beautiful fish fillets, these are huge cod loins. So we're gonna get two of those in there because we are hungry. Next, we're gonna go in with our mushy peas onto the fish. Again, don't be shy with it, just spoon that over the top of those beautiful 
bits of battered cod. The chips are done, so let's get these out of the oil. They're lovely and crispy, nice and golden. So we're just gonna get those out of the oil. So now we start layering the chips onto our butty. We're gonna play a little game of Jenga with these. Just gonna layer them across this way to start with, like so, and then back the other way. And then lastly, I'm gonna take some of this special sauce, which is ketchup mixed with a tiny bit of mustard on the top. Normally, I would put mustard in the tartar sauce. I've left it out of the tartar sauce because we're putting it in here. So these flavors should all complement each other pretty well. So that's the lid going on, and that is it. That's my ultimate fish and chip sandwich. Let's bring you in and have a closer look. So there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's actually started raining, so great British food by the seaside. You can forget about that. It's January, it's raining, but I've made a fish and chip sandwich. It's an absolute beaut. I'm not a monster. I'm gonna share this with my wife. So I'm gonna cut it in half, go in and eat. Thanks to Thermapen for A, telling me the temperature of the oil, for the second stage of the chips and the third stage, and of course, making sure our fish is safe to eat. On a smoking elk, thanks for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.